I have two voodoo cards here that were sent to me by a viewer. Of course, both of them don't work. But as we will learn today, it's not just simply reflowing pins around the 3DFX chips. I recorded about 4 hours of footage and tried to make a story out of it, and I always stumbled into a dead end. So now I'll just try to tell you what I discovered and how we may be able to fix one or two of those 3DFX Voodoo 2 cards. Those cards have been purchased on eBay and they were shipped from Greece to the US and unfortunately sometimes as it is with these old cards they both don't work. By the way these are 8 megabyte models so yeah if we manage to fix them we can also upgrade them to 12 megabytes and there is also going to be a follow-up project because I want to know if there is a big performance difference between the 8 and the 12 megabyte version of this card. But for this, well, we have to fix them. I don't want to go through a lot of troubleshooting now. I'll just basically condense the important information so that you may be able to debug your faulty Voodoo 2 card. There is going to be a second part to this video because it's just too much information in one video. So yeah, if you don't want to miss this, subscribe to my channel and then you will be notified when the next part goes live. So this video will be packed with a lot of information and who knows, maybe you learned something new today. Let's just dive in and the first thing we need to decide on is the drivers. For this project I decided to install the Fast Voodoo 4.6 drivers. This is the first time I'm using these and I'm aware that they are applying a default overclock by 3 MHz. So instead of the 90 MHz stock frequency, we are running at 93 MHz. Overclocking the Voodoo 2 with this driver is pretty straightforward and I think this will also work with the 3DFX drivers because, well, essentially it's the same thing. It's just that the fast Voodoo 4.6 driver is the most recent driver that you can get and it does support mismatched Voodoo 2 cards in SLI mode. So yeah, if you have two mismatched Voodoo 2 cards, for instance one from Creative and one from Diamond, you can make them work in SLI with a fast Voodoo 4.6 driver. So in order to adjust the frequency of both core and memory, you can go into the registry, you go to software, 3DFX Interactive, Voodoo 2, and then you have Direct3D and Glide options. You can change them in both, but I'm changing most of them today either in both or in the Glide version. There is a key prefix with SSTV2 underscore and then GRX CLK. This is the clock frequency that will be applied to the Voodoo 2 card when the driver initializes. So by default it's 93, but I want to run it at stock 90 MHz for now. The second option how you can change the frequency is by using a small tool. It adds a new tab in the screen properties and it is part of the fast Voodoo drivers. You just have to navigate to this folder, double click this application and then it tells you that it installed the overclocking tab. And now the next time you right click on your desktop and click on properties you will see a new tab there that you can easily use to change the frequency of your Voodoo 2 card. You can also enable or disable VSync. Now with that out of the way, we can inspect our first Voodoo card and I will only have a look at one Voodoo card today. But before that, let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Are you looking for a reliable partner for your next PCB or 3D printing projects? PCBWay is a true one-stop shop for all your maker needs. Right now, I'm eagerly awaiting a batch of vibrant purple PCBs. Tracking the fabrication process is a nice add-on, so you're never left wondering. Oh, and ordering is a breeze. Just upload your Gerber files, customize your board with options like eye-catching colors, varying thicknesses for added durability, and professional finishes such as Hassel or ENIG. Need stencils? Simply check the box during checkout. The frameless ones I have here are a huge time saver, especially for boards packed with solder points. Need inspiration? Dive into PCBWay's shared project space. It's loaded with open source designs, including my projects. And that's not all. They also offer sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and so much more, all under one roof. Sign up at PCBWay.com today and score 5 US dollars off your first order. Links are in the video description. Before you try to fix your Voodoo 2, or in essence anything, you first need to figure out what's wrong. The best scenario is if you have a test that fails consistently. So you need to be able to reproduce it and it should be consistent. Then you can try to figure out what's wrong with your card 
And when the test passes, then you know you fixed the problem. So first, let's figure out what's the issue. The owner told me that the cards freeze the system, a soft freeze, so it's not freezing Windows, it's just freezing the 3D application. So first, let's try to figure out if the cards really behave that way. And here's the first issue. I tried Need for Speed Porsche. I even went into the settings and changed it to use Glide. You have to modify a small settings file so that the Voodoo 2 is using Glide instead of Direct3D. And then I played the game. And to my surprise, well, I could finish a full round. So for me, that card looked good. Okay, maybe Need for Speed Porsche is not a good title to test this card with. Then I changed to Unreal. And in Unreal, also the castle flyby completed without issues. Hmm. So, I was stuck. Well, let's try Unreal Tournament. And even in Unreal Tournament, I couldn't figure out what's wrong with this card. I could just play. And then, by sheer accident, I opened Unreal Tournament again and just let the intro scene loop. Because I was thinking, okay, let's not touch anything. Let's just have the intro loop and see what happens. And yes, the game froze. There was the first freeze of that card. And as the owner said, it was a soft freeze. It didn't hang the system, just the game. Okay, I tried this a couple of more times and every time the game almost gets stuck at the same position. The card was crashing right here. Very interesting. You have no idea how many times I was anticipating the flyby on that blue neon sign. It was a guarantee that the game crashed exactly at the same location. The longer I tried, the more obvious it got that something is wrong with this card. As you can see here, there are tiny artifacts flickering and over time they got more to a point that I even got image corruption on the main screen of Unreal Tournament. So Unreal Tournament is our perfect candidate to test these cards. By the way, I tested my entire setup with a known working Voodoo 2 and it had absolutely no issues. So that confirms that the Voodoo 2 that was sent to me is definitely faulty. Now the first thing I tried is Mojo and Mojo didn't tell me anything. Everything seemed to be fine. We get four megabytes on the FBI chip and we have two TMUs, each with two megabytes of video memory. Perfect. Okay, I have another ace up my sleeves. It's Witchery. And I know many of you are asking me, where is Witchery? Where can I download it? Unfortunately, the author asked me not to share it and I will honor this. However, even though development is still ongoing, I somehow have a feeling that the tool will be available very, very soon. So just be a little bit more patient and hopefully this tool is going to help many of you fixing your Voodoo 2 cards. But in my case, all tests have passed and Witchery did not find any issues. So what was the next logical explanation for me? Let's just reflow all pins around the 3DFX chips and hope for the best. And yes, I did this and I'll spare you the details, but after reflowing 12 sides of 3DFX chips and countless pins, there was absolutely no difference. Oh, no. I got the same artifacts, Unreal Tournament still crashed at the exact same blue neon sign, and that's the end of the story. Okay, what else can we do? Well, I already mentioned in the beginning that you can overclock your Voodoo 2 if you wanted to, but you can also downclock your Voodoo 2 to 85 megahertz if you're using the tab in the screen settings. If you want to go lower, you have to do it through the registry, but don't go too low because at some point, yeah, problems start to appear, I guess then something is out of sync and you get artifacts from running your Voodoo 2 with a frequency that is too low. So in my case, I changed the frequency from 90 to 85 megahertz. And when we run Unreal Tournament, all of a sudden we are passing the blue neon sign. No artifacts, no crashes. Do we have a degraded TMU chip? More and more questions started to appear. The driver can not only be used to change the frequency, it can also disable one of the TMU chips. If you look at the Voodoo 2, it has three main chips. 
the center one on the bottom, this is the FBI or the frame buffer chip. And then you have two more chips on the top left and on the top right. These are TMU chips or texture mapping units. These ones are responsible to put textures over your 3D objects. Now, if you can disable one of them, it turns it basically into a Voodoo 1 just with higher frequencies, you could maybe identify a faulty texture mapping unit. All you have to do is to add another key in the registry. Unfortunately, this cannot be done on the overclocking tab in the screen properties. So you have to go to the registry and you add the SSTV2 underscore NUM for a number underscore TMUS, TMUs. And then you just add the number 1. And from now on, your Voodoo 2 should act like a Voodoo 1, just with higher frequencies. You won't see much of a feedback with this change, but if you look at the frame rate, you will see that it tanks quite a bit. So I think it's like a 30% decrease of frame rates, around that ballpark. So instead of reaching up to 70, 75 frames per second, we only get around 40 to 45 frames per second. So, but which chip is going to be disabled? Well, luckily this has already been figured out by the community as well. So if you have two TMU chips, the right one is TMU0, the one that is the furthest away from the VGA connectors, and the one to the left is TMU1. When you disable the TMU in the registry, TMU1 is going to be disabled. So now the question is, what did I get when TMU1 is disabled? and we get exactly the same issue. So that means our TMU0 is faulty, right? Well, this is what I thought, and I started to remove TMU0. Now here's one thing to note. TMU0 is absolutely necessary for Voodoo 2 to work, so you cannot run the Voodoo 2 and just expect TMU1 to jump in and do the heavy lifting. No, if TMU0 is damaged or not working, your entire Voodoo card will not work. And I did run the card with TMU0 removed, but it's not being detected. It cannot be used by any 3D application. And Mojo confirms this. We get the output that we have seen so many times when there are loose pins around the FBI and the TMU chip. So yeah, 0x dead. That means this card is unusable. Okay, then I only have one other choice. I have to move TMU number 1 to the spot where TMU0 was located. And this is exactly what I did. I removed TMU1 and soldered it in place of TMU0. Now the card should work again. We have one TMU, but it is on the right spot. With this configuration, your Voodoo 2 should still be functioning, but it cannot do multi-texturing. It's basically a souped up Voodoo 1 at higher frequencies. So and now the question is, did it improve Unreal Tournament? And the answer is no. There is no change. We get exactly the same issue that we have seen before. The blue neon sign is crashing our Voodoo 2 card. So then there is not much left. We still have some memory for the TMU. We have the FBI chip. And then there are a few other components around the card. But it looks like our TMUs may not be the issue for our crashes. TMU0 has access to 2 megabytes and these are distributed among four memory chips. So let's just get the four memory chips off and replace them with new ones and see if that makes a difference. And no, still the same exact issue. So now we swap the TMUs, we replace the memory chips, we know that it's still not working. If we downclock the card by five megahertz, it looks like it's working, but we still don't know exactly what's at fault. After going back and forth, I reached out to the master for guidance, Maxim, the author of Witchery. He pointed me to that small little chip that sits between the RAM duck and the FBI chip. This chip is an octal buffer and line driver for important signals. And it is connecting between our RAM duck and the FBI chip and somehow affects our TMU chips as well. Maybe Maxim is right and this could be the culprit. He told me to poke around and measure all resistances, the tiny resistors that are right next to this chip. Unfortunately, it isn't that easy. All these components are in working condition. So then the only other option I have is to replace this chip. But there is the issue. The problem is my donor card. Because my donor card has a chip at this location, 
but it is a different one. It is the 74AC244. As it turns out, it needs a different configuration on the Voodoo 2. Basically, I have to get rid of this resistor that Diamond put on this card and replace some of the SMD components with other values. Wow, what a project. Can you believe it? All this swapping around TMU chips, removing memory chips, trying to figure out what's going on. And then it's just this tiny chip? Wow. Well, I'm very happy that this Voodoo 2 is now fully working. I could even overclock it to 100 megahertz. This card was not stable at the stock 90 megahertz. So yeah, if you have a Voodoo 2 card, run the Unreal Tournament intro scene and see what you get exactly at this spot. Do you get grey artifacts? Does it crash? Then most likely you have exactly the same issue that I have on this card. Now here's the kicker. The other card has exactly the same issue. But there is even more wrong with this card. And in the next video, we are probing around the power delivery of the Voodoo 2 and find some bad caps with a thermal camera, but even caps that can't be detected with a thermal camera and are still faulty, but there is a trick and I will show you this in the next video. So if you don't want to miss this, then please subscribe. It is going to be really, really cool. If you're interested in this, you know what to do. And this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know there was a lot of information in there, but if you have a Voodoo 2 card, I think it's absolutely vital to know about this. And don't miss the next video when we have a look at the second Voodoo 2. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and thanks to all my Patreons who are already supporting this channel. If you want to become a Patreon, please head over to Patreon and pick one of the membership tiers. You will get early access to videos, I'll post there from time to time, and you have an easy way to reach out to me. And of course, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.